going to do a problem that involves um, another quadratic model, enclosing a field with a fence. Suppose you have a certain amount of fencing and you want to create a rectangular field. The fence would be the perimeter of the field. So let's review some formulas. Perimeter is given by the formula two widths plus two lengths for our rectangular field. And then if we want to deal with area, that would simply be the length times the width of our rectangular field. We're going to be doing this problem to find the maximum area we can enclose with a certain amount of fencing. So let's suppose that we have 400 yards of fence. So for example, 400 yards of fencing are provided. We want to find a formula that represents the area that can be enclosed by the fence. So step one, find a function for the area. as a function of the width of the rectangle. And then we will also find what the maximum area we can enclose will be. What maximum area? we enclose. Along with these questions we will be dealing with other questions such as what is the domain of the width of the field, what numbers could it be, and um, we will also be using a graphing utility to help us find the maximum. Okay, so to begin with let's take our perimeter formula and plug in the number we know, which is 400 yards of fence. So we're going to put 400 in for P. Now, of course, we also have this area formula. Neither one of them is a function because they both require length and width. I'm going to change my length to a cursive L because it gets a little confusing and looks like a 1 sometimes if I don't do that. Okay. So we want to be able to combine this function with the, uh, this equation, formula, with the area equation so that all we have is one variable, so that it will be a function of the width. So we want to get rid of L, the length. We can do that by taking this equation and solving it for L. So to solve this equation for L, we're going to subtract 2W from both sides and then divide both sides by 2. So that means that L will equal 200 minus W. I kind of switched sides so that I have what L equals instead of having this over here. Now I can take what L equals and I can plug it into the area formula, which is length times width. So instead of length, I'm going to put 200 minus W in place of that. So there's a function, I could leave it like that, or I could multiply the w through so that I have 200w minus w squared. And sometimes I'm a little picky about my quadratics being in the right order, so I might just switch these two terms so that the squared is first. That way I know that this is my a term, this is my b term, in case I need to use that, which I will. So here is my area function as a function of the width of the field based on 400 yards for the fence. Okay, now let's address our other question. What maximum area can we enclose? Well, that means we need to find the maximum value for this quadratic. Obviously, the negative means it's an upside-down parabola, so it does have a maximum value at the vertex. We can easily find the vertex by using the equation 
x equals negative b over 2a, or in this case, x is actually w. We're finding the width that we would need to enclose the um, largest area. Okay, so here in our quadratic, the 200 is our b value, and a negative 1, there's an invisible 1 there, is the a value. So I'm going to plug those in, negative, plug in the 200, over 2 times negative 1. That means that the maximum area can be enclosed when the width equals 100. Okay? Well, if the width of the rectangle is 100, what will the length have to be? If width equals 100, then based on this formula that we were just using a few minutes ago, length will have to be 200 offense minus 100 for the width leaving 100 for the length. The maximum area that can be enclosed just happens to require a rectangle that is actually a square where the length and the width are equal. So then what is the maximum area? Well, the maximum area will happen when the width is 100 and the length is 100. So we can either just do that problem 100 times 100 and get our answer of 10,000, or we can actually use our function that we created in the first place. So let's practice doing that. So what we're saying is the function of 100 when the, f when the width is 100, sorry, I decided to rewrite my function a little bit from what I was doing, would be negative 100 squared. Now that, one, that negative is separate from the w. So when we plug in width, we're not going to square the negative. We just square the 100, and then it stays negative. Plus 200 times 100. If we work that out, we get the same answer we got when we did length times width, which is 10,000 square yards for the maximum area. Now let's verify this answer by using a graphing utility. The easiest thing to do first to make sure our graph is appropriate is to find the domain. So let's go ahead and find the domain for our function. Remember our function is negative w squared plus 200w. If you think about the problem itself, if we have 400 yards of fence, then that means we have 200 yards for a width and a length of our rectangle. So we have 400 yards to go all the way around. Since in a rectangle the widths are the same here and here and the lengths are the same here and here, then this plus this must equal 200 and this plus this must equal 200. That means that the width of our rectangle cannot be 200 because there has to be something left for the length but it can be up to 200, like 199.9 .9, while the length is only 0.1 or something like that. So that means our domain, which we don't want to be negative and we also don't want it to be zero, has to be somewhere between zero and 200. Once we know that domain, graphing is not too difficult. Let's go to a graphing utility. This is a TI-83+. plus. I'm going to type in my function, but instead of w's, I'm going to use x's. So negative x squared plus 200x. Clear the rest of the stuff out that I had here previously. Now before I hit graph, I'm going to go to the window, and I'm going to set the x values to the domain that I've determined. Or I might want to go a little bit larger than the domain. Right now I'm just going with the domain 0 to 200. It might be better to go with something like negative 10 to 250 if we wanted to. And then, of course, a scale of 1 is too small. We want, we want that to be bigger, maybe 25, because that's how often the tick marks show up on our graph. Now, we're not going to worry about the y values at all. We're just going to use a function that this calculator has called zoom fit. So I'm going to go to the zoom button, and I go to option 0, which is zoom fit. Then I wait, and it will graph my parabola neatly within that domain and fit the range to it perfectly. Now to find the maximum all I have to do is go second 
trace, which is the calculate menu, find the maximum, hit enter. I want to make sure my cursor is a little bit to the left of the maximum, and then over a little bit to the right of the maximum, and then hit enter one more time to take it exactly to the maximum point. So you can see there the x value, or the width of the field, would be 100 at the maximum, and then the y value, or the maximum area, will be 10,000, just like our calculations determined.